All right, welcome to this Asana tutorial video sponsored by Simple Business Solutions. I am Chris. I'm going to be walking you through the very basics of Asana today. I'm going to go over just the basic things. This isn't going to cover usability. It's not going to cover getting things done or any of the more um, tech tip like stuff. Any of the any of the other things that you can do to supercharge your experience with Asana. So we're going to look at three main areas here in Asana. One is this left hand pane always in blue. You can hide it by clicking this X. You can show it by clicking that little square. You may have this set up slightly differently. There's two things. There's two ways that Asana can show up. One is with a set of teams and projects, and then one is just projects. But ultimately, everything that you can click on over here um, is everything under a label that says projects is a project. A project is just a collection of tasks. You can see I have some here. I have some more here, but. We're going to work in this miscellaneous one for now. So that's the first section. The second section is the, it's usually always shown. This is the main work area for Asana, and this is the list of tasks. So here we have these different sections created. I'll show you how to make those. We have a task here. I'll show you how to make that. And we see my face next to it. That means that the task is assigned to me. If you see a date next to it, it means that there's a due date and you can complete the task by checking this box. If you want to do any editing in the task, add any comments, change a description, view more information, you need to click not this button, but the actual task itself. And, and also don't click any buttons over here. You're just gonna click in the task. You see, this is the third area that we're gonna use in Asana. Um, we have our title, same thing as over here. We have a description and we have some subtasks that I've made. So how do we know what to put where? Well, a title is like the subject of an email. It will be short and sweet, usually less than 10 characters. It should definitely be actionable. So teach is an actionable thing. I can teach somebody something. And that's exactly the format, teach people Asana. Now, if I wanna know more information about what I'm teaching people or why I'm teaching them that or anything like that. So if you're actually the person in charge of putting tasks together for people, you wanna make sure that Again, you keep your title short and sweet, but then any other details can go in this description section. So you see the people at organization XYZ need to be taught the basics of Asana. The intention is to help them navigate better. So now I know that my focus when I teach these people is just navigation if I execute this task. Just like the message of an email, more details in the body of the email. Now, what happens if you start to create those specifics or start to create those details and you notice that there's more things that come out of that for instance we need to hand out materials well that could be another task and it should be that's why we have handout materials here hold a class okay that's another subtask in general your subtasks are always going to be relative to and in the context of this what i what we will call a parent task and so if I'm going to teach people Asana, I know that I need to hand out materials. I probably even need to create the materials as well. So why, why even bother? Why even, you know, why not use a to-do list on paper? Well, with Asana, you have the flexibility to easily move your checklist items. Let's say that creating the materials becomes a project in and of itself, and I didn't anticipate doing that. I can move it out of here and treat it like its own thing. I can also click this little button and make this full screen. So now my focus is just this one item. And because my focus is just this one item, I'm not gonna get distracted. I, if I look at my list, which, you know, again, it's just this one thing versus a sheet of paper in front of me, I don't need to filter. I don't need to make any decisions. What I'm working on is right in front of me. And I can also go in and add more details about each of these things. So instead of having pages upon pages of notes or anything like that, just like we did to add details here, I can click. Now, you'll notice I click this task, but nothing pops up. That's because it's a subtask. So we can click this little bubble off to the right, and it opens up the same sort of interface where we can add a description, where we can add subtasks, we can add attachments, things like that. You can, add, you can assign these to people. So even though I'm assigned teaching people Asana, I may want to assign somebody else creating the materials. We can do that. So there's two really important things to remember. By the way, to get back to this view, after I clicked full screen, I just clicked this X. There's two really important things to remember about Asana. If it's not in Asana, it doesn't exist. 
And the reason for that is just like anything that you write down that you're going to take action on, you want to make sure that all of the actions that you need to take are documented and that you can pull them up. Now, it would be very tedious to sort through a bunch of projects with a bunch of lists, a bunch of different ways. So that brings me to the second point. The second thing to focus on to always make sure happens, aside from, of course, making sure that your, your titles are very short and actionable, which is a given, is to make sure that every task is assigned to somebody. I'm not going to go into why that's important here. You can catch that in the Getting Things Done tutorial for Asana. But if you make sure that every task is assigned to somebody, then everybody on the team will see the tasks that they're assigned. So I've assigned this to myself. You can remove a task from being assigned by clicking this X and you can reassign it by clicking the name, or you can do the same thing. If you're, if, if you don't have this, this third view, this third area up, you can do the same thing by just clicking the face and you know, here there was a button that said assigned to me. You could type a name, you could do whatever, type an email address to invite somebody into this project and click assign. Now that triggered a whole bunch of actions, but you will see those actions in the getting things done video for Asana. We're not going to cover those here, but that's the basics. Always make sure that the task is actionable. Always make sure that you assign it to somebody and make sure it goes in the right project. If there's any other actions that come out of the task as you start to describe it and also be as thorough as possible, it is always best to give more information than not enough. So be as thorough as possible. And again, if there's any other tasks that come out of that thoroughness, they become subtasks. And that's it. That's the basics of Asana. Um, you'll also notice a comment field over here. Um, the very last thing, you know, and, I, and I've, I've toyed with, should I add this into the tutorial or not? But I think it's important. The very last thing is whenever there's any action that you take on a task or any updates that you have on a task, always add it as a comment. If it's not an Asana. It doesn't exist. So people don't know that you worked on it. And adding it as a comment, just like assigning a task to somebody, triggers a whole bunch of actions. And we're going to cover those in getting things done with Asana, which is the productivity segment of this series. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe. And I will see you guys soon.